Today we'll use a sky crane to deliver a rover inside of a giant crater on Val. But getting to Val is easier said than done because it's so far away. But gladly I have the perfect vehicle for the job which you can see being constructed in the background. Now the biggest challenge with building a sky crane that can deliver a rover is how to fit the rover in and how to fit the lander on top of it. Now I think I found a pretty good solution. First of all I experimented a bunch of time and you can see very weird looking prototypes. One time I built like a thing that looks like an angry bird, you can see that in a second. And I used this inline docking port which you can finally attach to things. In case P1 you couldn't, now here you can. So this is pretty cool. And I also experimented a bit with the design of the rover and you can see we attached rockets to the rover because why not? Why shouldn't we attach rockets to the rover, right? So this has multiple benefits. First of all, I don't need an electrical power source because we have the engines who constantly charge up the batteries. Second of all, it's cool. Third of all, it's a lot faster than if you just use electrical power. So why shouldn't I add rocket engines? There is no reason. So I'm pretty happy with the rover in general. It has a spot for three Kerbals, although only two can be in the lander. But I thought the Kerbals that will land on Val, they should have a bit of room to spare. Now I won't just land any Kerbal on Val, I will land Val on Val. Not funny, I know, but still, I don't know. It was more of a, of a random thing, the game just put Val into the lander. I didn't even check which Kerbal is in the lander, to be honest. But yeah, at the end it worked out pretty well, so uh, yeah. Then we attached the engines. Now I have two bigger engines and two smaller engines on each side, like two bigger in general and four smaller engines. Now the game didn't tell me the right thrust to weight ratio, so I just went overkill, just to be sure. I don't want to fly too well and find out, oops, I can't even decelerate, that would be very dumb. And then I also decided to make this the re-entry pod for Kerbin as well, which has one major benefit, it simplifies things a lot. Now we don't have to dock different modules together, we can just have this transfer stage underneath which really really helps because wobbliness and bugs, you know the game. Second of all, it has a drawback, the Kerbals don't have any space, but I don't care about uh, space of Kerbals because uh, they don't care as well. So let's just hope they have enough snacks with them because uh, yeah, it would be dumb to run out of food while three years away, <laughs> but still. Uh, yeah, then I just went for a simple transfer stage. I didn't use the ball tank because it would make the rocket so giant. And this was more than enough. We had like 3000 meters a second left to spare when I uh, arrived at Kerbin again. So it was all okay. Then adding a fairing and of course strutting everything up. Even with those struts, you can see billions of struts. It was still wobbly, so yeah, uh, it was a bit dumb. Now here I thought I could stage away the stages on the side, but then I ran into the camera bug again, which they supposedly fixed, but I don't know, from my, for me they didn't. So I just connected those two stages up to act as one fuel tank, and then it worked. So yeah, if you don't see the staging of those uh, side stages, it has to do with that. But after that, we are pretty much done. We just need to uh, strut things up. And here I also added some separation engines, which of course I removed again later on. And of course some launch clamps, because I'm not a psychopath who doesn't use launch clamps. <coughs> Five lost videos. But anyways, let's get to the launch. And we have liftoff, ladies and gentlemen, with a slight little voice crack in my voice. And today's launch song is called Personal Jesus, which fits this mission 10 out of 10. Because I myself wanted to have a personal Jesus while recording this, because every single bug the game has to offer just wanted me to, I don't know, abandon the mission. The game didn't want me to record this mission, and every bug it had was rolled out to me, but at the end I succeeded for you guys and this staging here is just beautiful so this rocket isn't an accidental ssto like my three last ones which is pretty good then orbital insertion burn and after that we can extend out our solar panels 
to get electricity. And I'm not gonna lie, I clipped in an RTG as well, but this solar panel would be enough to generate electricity. But then, nothing is holding us back of going to Val. So here we are on our escape burn from Kerbin and the stage is almost running out of fuel slowly but surely we are raising up our apoapsis to Chul to visit its iciest moon and discover its secrets. But not before staging away the chemical stage and switching to nuclear after which our transfer burn is done and here we are flying away from Kerbin and here he is. Here is Joule. First of all, Tylo, because we took a Tylo gravity assist. And then Joule, you can also see Leif. And after swinging around Joule, we have a second Tylo gravity assist that flings us directly to Val. And speaking of Val, here it is, lurking behind the solar panels, but now we can finally see it. And we are approaching it rapidly, coming closer to the deceleration burn. And speaking of the deceleration burn, here it is. Now first of all we see a little sunset. Because I'm addicted to sunsets, they are in every single video I do, because they're just amazing. And then we can start circularizing around Val, which is pretty much done, because we don't have to expel a lot of Delta V for it, because of the two Tylo gravity assists. We only needed about a thousand meters a second. And here we are in an orbit around Val. You can take a look at the icy blue surface. But now, decoupling the lander. And with that, let's start the landing procedure. And with that, our landing procedure has started. We are slowly but surely approaching the surface of Val. And then you can see the amazing crater we will land in, but not before starting the actual landing burn itself. But here is the crater. So it was quite challenging landing inside of this crater, but at the end we managed to do it. Now we are further decelerating to that crater. Now I didn't know if there were enough flat spots in that crater to land, but at the end it turned out well. First of all, landing legs are out, there is no way back, we have to land. We can switch over to the camera on board of the lander and the horizon is creeping closer to us. And after almost zeroing out the speed we had to land, the fuel was getting tight, I wanted to have a good margin to get back. So the shadow is creeping closer to us and Val is giving its best to control the descending speed as good as possible to have a smooth landing. Speaking of landing, here we have touchdown on Val, almost, with a little hop. But then we are landed. We landed on Val with the rover. Speaking of the rover, let's get it out. Let's decouple it and let's drive it around. But first of all, of course, we need to plant the flag. Not before getting the rover out though. And here you can see the magic of this inline docking port. It's just super great. I'm so thankful they finally integrated that into KSP2 so we can build with it as well. This wasn't possible in KSP1. But then, I, this is the point I could do a very tasteless woman choke because, well, look at how bad parked this car is. But I won't do it, guys. I will spare you of the headache. But then Val can do the first extravehicular activity on Val before planting the flag, of course. This has to be in the mission. It's the most important part of the mission. The only reason I went here is to plant the flag. Okay, not quite, but I wanted to get the rover here. Speaking of the rover, here it is. We can get it out and activate the rocket engines because we have a rocket powered rover. And if you like rovers in KSP2, you might also enjoy Kerbal Vision's video where he put the rover to Elu. It's on the info court. You can watch this after this video. But first of all, I drove to those scattered things there I saw because I didn't know what it was. And it turns out it's a field of, I don't know, ice diamonds, ice crystals. It looked really, really cool up close. You can see it here in a second. Now I'm glad we don't have rubber tires filled with air because they would have popped here. But still look at this, it looks really really cool. Sadly it doesn't have collision because well in case we do nothing has collision on the ground. But it looks super super cool. Just look at this shot if you're not convinced.
And flying through the ice crystals with a jetpack is also really really fun, I can say you guys. Like if I would be better with the jetpack it would be more fun probably. But then we wanted to continue our journey, we want to get out of the crater to get a great view of the crater itself. Here with a little bit of the rockets, it was super fast to get there, only took a bunch of minutes. And after minutes of driving, we finally came closer to our destination. By the way, you saw the IVA shot, pretty cool. You can do that with the captured view camera. Here we are at our final destination. So let's walk Val out to the viewpoint we selected for her, from which we will hopefully have a view of the whole crater. And here is that view. It looks great, doesn't it? I like the terrain design in KSP2. But then it was time to go back and I chosen a bit of a different route. You can see it here. I wanted to use the full potential of the rockets and see if this could also be used as Santa's slave. But yeah, kinda could. Although the landing was a bit hard. You can see here I tried landing. I tried flipping it around but sadly it didn't work out that well. After that terrible choke, it's definitely time to leave. Now something I have to address. I had to use infinite propellant for this. Because you saw I have 1200 meters a second, which would have been more than enough. Like I did well missions in the past uh, in case B1 and in case B2 as well one. That where I had enough fuel to do that. But here it just had the bug where the fuel just depleted faster. So for this ascent I used infinite fuel, but you saw it would work, okay? It would have enough fuel, the mission would be possible. It's just one of the bugs I encountered. But then let's get back home to Kerbin. They have waited long enough here. They deserve to go home again. Contrary to all the guys in bases I put somewhere that I completely forgot about, they will just die there, I guess. Well, yeah, here is Kerbin and then we can re-enter. Now, yeah, re-entries in KSP2 aren't that spectacular because, well, re-entry heating is not in the game. And something I will introduce new at the end, there will be an outtake of the week. But if you like this video, you will also like the video on screen where I put a space station inside of dress rings. Definitely worth checking out. With that, goodbye. So let's get that rover out. We want to... <laughs> Ouch, I just hit my hands. <laughs> I, I'm doing gestures while doing this commentary and I just hit my hand at like my table here, but really hard. <laughs>